The empty space in the box is the cavity. The normal opening is the lid. This is the abnormal opening. Protrusion of a viscous through the opening is a hernia. The definition of a hernia is protrusion of part or whole of a viscous through an abnormal opening in the walls of its containing cavity. The abdominal wall has nine layers. The middle layers are the three muscles. The outer layers are the skin, subcutaneous fat and fascia scarpa. Reflected exactly on the inside by the peritoneum, extraperitoneal fat and the fascia transversalis. Recollect the embryology to understand the descent of the testis. The abdominal wall gets tented while the testis takes a diagonal path. This explains the complex but easily understandable anatomy of the inguinal canal. The Fruchard's myopectineal orifice is bounded superiorly by the conjoint tendon and inferiorly by the Cooper's ligament. In between runs the inguinal ligament. The inguinal canal is roofed by the transversus abdominis. The floor is the inguinal ligament. Anteriorly is the epineurosis and posteriorly is the fascia transversalis. This canal is quite dynamic. The mechanisms that prevent hernia are that naturally one squats during nature calls and lifting a heavy weight, thus protecting the canal. The cremaster forms a ball valve in the canal. The conjoint tendon behaves as a shutter valve. The oblique nature of the canal forms a flap valve. But remember that once the herniation occurs, this dynamicity is lost and the tissues get weaker. To understand the etiology of the hernia, the various causes could be congenital, such as cretinism and ectopia vesicae, also a persistent processus vaginalis. The traumatic cause are injury to the ilioinguinal and iliohepigastric nerve during appendectomy, and one can avoid this by not going below the anterior superior iliac spine in the exposure. Collagen diseases such as latherism, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, even smoking can predispose to a hernia. Increased intra-abdominal pressure, as occurs with abdominal tumors and ascites, may pre predispose to hernia. Repetitive stress injury, such as chronic cough, constipation, bladder outflow obstruction, or peritoneal dialysis, where the muscles in the fascia get stretched, and every time one coughs or strains, there is repetitive stress. Now one can understand that the tissues are weak and using a mesh would be a good idea to reinforce the repair. A mesh acts as a scaffold into which the collagen will grow. Depending on the location of the abnormal opening, the hernias could be either external or internal. These are the common sites of external hernia. A Peterson hernia is a herniation of bubble through a mesenteric defect. The abnormal openings are usually musculoepineurotic defects which constrict the viscera causing pressure, edema, venous congestion and strangulation ultimately leading to perforation. A hernia has three parts, the peritoneal diverticulum or sac, the coverings of the sac from the abdominal wall and the contents, omental, bowel, etc. Opening of the sac is the mouth. The narrowest portion is the neck. The largest part is the fundus and the whole sac is its body. Depending on the status of the contents, a hernia could be reducible where the contents completely reduce from the sac into the original cavity. Irreducible. The contents don't reduce either partially or completely either due to adhesions, inflammation or a narrow defect. Obstructed hernia, the contents being small bowel with luminal obstruction. Incarcerated hernia, content being colon with luminal obstruction. Strangulated hernia, a viscera with compromised blood supply. Inflamed hernia, where the contents are inflamed like appendicitis or oophoritis. Bowel strangulation can occur 
without any symptoms of obstruction, especially in a Richter's hernia, where only a small portion of the bowel circumference is involved. Gangrene and perforation occur before the operation is undertaken, as opposed to an omental strangulation, which presents with pain and redness with local abscess, but there are no intestinal obstructive symptoms. In an inflamed hernia, the hernia is tender but not tense. So this is how one differentiates the various complications. As a surgeon, one should know how to access the abnormal defect without damaging the covers and contents of the hernia while ensuring that the patient is safe. A complicated hernia needs more skill as one would be dealing not only with the sac and the defect but even with the contents and that too in an emergency setting.